Hey guys, welcome to Critical Beauty Salon. If you're new to this channel, welcome. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do it now by clicking subscribe and the bell icon below to get instant notification for the next video. In my last video, I mentioned that once the number of subscribers has reached 3,000, I will start giving away prizes. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe. In 2002, the enchanted island nation of Puerto Rico hosted the Miss Universe pageant for the second straight year in a row. As soon as the delegates started arriving in San Juan, the Puerto Rican press immediately focused their attention on the strong Latin delegates such as Colombia, Venezuela, and the Dominican Republic. The hometown delegate, Isis Marica Salduc, had already been considered as a shoe-in for the semifinals. After all, she underwent the same training as that of her predecessor, Denise Quinones, who won in 2001. All 73 delegates arrived without any problems, except for one, Oksana Fyodorova of Russia. The Russian delegate apparently had to contend with bureaucratic snafu that caused delay in the processing of her visa. And when she finally arrived a few days later, tension and perhaps nervousness increased among the delegates. Oksana was there to win, and so she did. The preliminary judges responsible for selecting the 10 semi-finalists had the difficult task of screening and scrutinizing each delegate. What exactly were they looking for? Excellent communication skills is a must for every potential beauty queen, and it is a given requisite. The countries that have been sending delegates to the contest since 1952 know that dumbness is a losing trait and that physical beauty does not always guarantee victory. What kind of questions exactly did those preliminary judges ask each contestant? Some observers say that the not so strong delegates were asked dumb questions such as, how many pieces of luggage did you bring? Or what is your favorite drink? While the heavy favorites were asked challenging questions, perhaps like, how do you resolve the war in the Middle East? Or, what would you do to prevent world hunger? It would be so naive to assume that the preliminary judges had not been influenced one way or the other by the press or pageant fans. When newspapers are studded with images of Mrs. Venezuela, South Africa, Panama, and Russia, it is hard not to take a second, third look at these pictures. Supposedly, the judges were heavily sequestered and were not allowed to socialize with the candidates at all. This is also another requisite. However, there is no rule, not to my knowledge, that judges are forbidden to check the social media of the contestants, well, at least back in 2002, to buy local newspapers or to watch TV interviews of the delegates. For all we know, these same judges were present during the fashion show where they had a chance to pre-scrutinize each of the candidates. Each preliminary judge, therefore, had at least a preliminary notion of whom he or she would vote for. While checking my old notes from the 2002 pageant, I couldn't help but analyze the bios of the preliminary judges posted on the Miss Universe website. I noticed that at least five of those judges, two of which came from South Africa and Russia, were directly involved with the fashion and modeling industries. So. It was not surprising that the top 10 delegates all projected the qualities of a fashion or runway model. The model look was undoubtedly the deciding factor, so you could imagine that anyone else who did not fit the mold had to be automatically excluded. This spelled bad news for the delegates who were either too short, too exotic, or too bland. The question of hairstyle was probably not an issue. You can wear your hair up or down and still land a spot in the semifinals. Among the semi-finalists, five sported an updo hairstyle during the evening gown competition, India, Venezuela, Albania, Cyprus, and China. A nagging question haunts me. What happened to the favorite black delegates? What happened to Nigeria, Jamaica, Colombia, and the Dominican Republic? Could it be that none of them look good with a hairstyle different from what they're used to wearing? Could it be that the preliminary judges were searching for versatility? the essence of a true fashion model? Ethnic. Just a few hours after Oksana's coronation, I remember vividly several angry fans 
posted cynical remarks on message boards regarding the exclusion of black delegates. Comments like, the judges were racists, it's fixed, Colombia should have been up there, or other remarks which somehow denote charges of racism. A poster wrote a lengthy message about ethnic politics, suggesting that the machine of his organization systematically modified the criteria of the pageant so that they, the black delegates, could be eliminated in the early phase of the competition. Another fan replied by simply saying, referring to the original poster, mm, stupid and too damn long. The original poster was right in speculating that ethnic politics played a significant role to a certain degree. All aspects of life are political to begin with, so if the semifinalists were selected because the preliminary judges believe that the former would be better sellers for the sponsors, then many potential sellers got locked out. Thus, a Lacroix watch or a Mickey Moto pearl necklace would probably not sell well in Black Africa, even though both products would look stunning on Sudanese-born supermodel Alec Wack, on Angolan-born supermodel Maria Borges, or on Senegalese-born Kudia Diop. The blueprint swimwear and fitness competition bore resemblance to a Victoria's Secret commercial in which busty supermodels do the catwalk in bikinis and angel wings. How many conservative Egyptian or Turkish women could identify with such an image? Arpeggio Cosmetics, the official cosmetics sponsor in 2002, which by the way has since gone out of business, might have increased sales by climbing up all 75 contestants of diverse skin tones, but the website at that time always featured a blonde model on the cover page, and no reference at all was made to so-called ethnic products. It eventually boils down to taste and economics. But is that all? Obviously not. The Miss Universe organizers stated that they wanted to get beyond an image of a pageant queen as focus on looks alone. This may sound like a cliche, but nevertheless proves encouraging. Just take a look at Oksana's remarkable background. I mean, she had a law degree. She was completing a doctoral thesis on civil law. She was a trained shooter. She was a champion volleyball player. She was a senior police lieutenant. She was due for a promotion to captain that August. And she was licensed to kill. Sounds like a James Bond girl to me. Plus, she was also a bookworm. I mean, how many beauty queens do you know claim to like reading books? You have to go back to Miss Chile in 1989 who devoured the works of Chilean writer Gabriela Mistral. Oksana may speak minimal English, but she expressed her desire to speak it fluently. Honestly, I don't know of any other Miss Universe contestant, white, black, brown, or yellow, who had been a great achiever like Oksana was. Now, to answer the question as to why no black contestant made the top 10, there's really no right or wrong answer. We can only assume that, one, none of the black contestants performed well during the preliminaries, at least not good enough for the preliminary judges. Two, the preliminary judges have been instructed to specifically focus on contestants with a complete package, such as beauty, poise, personality, superior communication skills, intelligence, and marketability that none of the black contestants possessed. Three, the majority of the preliminary judges outnumbered the minority of preliminary judges who had voted for some of the black contestants. Four, just sheer bad luck. Maybe it just wasn't the year for black beauties. Five, there were only top 10 spots available, but if there had been a top 15 list, I'm sure that at least five black contestants would have made the cut, even if it were based on looks alone. If I had been a preliminary judge and if there had been a top 15 list, I probably would have added these girls. Colombia, Vanessa Mendoza. Vanessa became an instant celebrity in her country after being crowned as the first black Miss Colombia. Before competing nationally, Vanessa had won Miss Choco State Pageant in 2001, a year in which Miss Colombia was facing a racial scandal. Her Colombian fans had named her Black Barbie. 
Colombian girls are usually very strong competitors, and the only thing I can think of why Vanessa did not make the top 10 is probably because they were poor gown choice. Nigeria, Chinenye Ochuba. Chinenye was another favorite at Miss Universe 2002, but did not make the cut. However, she competed in Miss World a few months later and made the top 10 list and won the African Continental Queen of Beauty. Another black beauty that was excluded from the top 10 list was Jamaica's Sanya Hughes. Just look at that gorgeous face. Sanya was only 19 when she won her national title, and I suspect that her young age and perhaps lack of life experience diminished her chances of advancing in the semifinals. USA, Shantae Hinton. To be honest, Shantae is my least favorite Miss USA to date. I didn't care much for her when she was competing in Miss USA 2002, and didn't care much for her either in Miss Universe 2002. However, if there had been a top 15, Shantae would have definitely made it because of the strong sash factor, despite her mediocre beauty and muscular physique. I'm not sure if it's true, but I heard that she stormed off the stage after the 10th semifinalist Miss Venezuela was called. And lastly, Dominican Republic, Ruth Okumares. Ruth became a celebrity in her nation by becoming the first woman of predominantly African heritage to represent the Dominican Republic at Miss Universe. Ruth had earned the admiration of many pageant fans who considered her as one of their favorites or who deemed her as the one to beat. But when she failed to make the top 10, her fans were shocked, causing many internet users and bloggers to coin the pageant term the Ruth Okumares Award to signify a pageant contestant who seems guaranteed to be a finalist but does not make the maximum entry at the initial placement selections of the pageant. What is interesting is that the following year in 2003, the number of semi-finalists has been increased to 15. I can only suspect that the Miss Universe organization received tremendous backlash for having excluded so many deserving black beauties that the pageant committee was forced to change the selection format. 2002 was the last year that a top 10 list was called. Since then, the list has expanded to 15, 16, and now 20 semi-finalists. And there you have it, the controversy behind the exclusion of black beauties in Miss Universe 2002 pageant and the possible reasons behind it. Do you agree or disagree? Comment below. Thank you for watching, guys. Until the next time. Bye. Hi. Hey, Willa. How are you? So cute. I'll get get my mom. Just go. Uh...